by close. MacIver claimed that Donaldson had been engaged in and conducting himself in an unseemly and non-communist manner towards a fellow member of the exploited classes. <laughs> they'd gone to a door, one of three in the third landing, and their knock had been answered by a wee poorly dressed four-year-old. Daddy, it's two mans, the wee girl had thrown back into the kitchen. Tell them to come in, came a hoarse voice from the kitchen, whence also came the smells of decayed masonry, dampness and cabbage. The latter from a pot in the half range, above which hung a picture of King Billy crossing the Boyne, with the wallpaper peeling round it. The possessor of the hoarse voice sat dressed in a jacket, bonnet and red, white and blue scarf, his bared feet stuck in a zinc basin of soapy water. What do you want? He asked. We're here, said MacIver, to canvass on behalf of Dan Kelly. Kelly, said the man. Another pape, eh? No, says MacIver. Communist. Communist! The man exploded, now standing up in the basin into which his trouser legs fell. <laughs> because of all the trouble in this country, I've had my way and hang a lot of you, and for a start, I'll throw the two of you down that stair. I am a true blue Tory. Now this, Donaldson, a building trade worker, had hit the man with a bundle of leaflets and shouted, Tory! Living in a place like this? Shall f***ing heed you should be steeping in that place. <laughs> At the age of 16, Matt McGinn became an atheist, and then a communist, and then, well, as his wife Jeanette said, would he been happy with any one of many titles? Anarchist, socialist, socialist republican, revolutionary? Typically, he thought many religious views were merely funny, and naturally, he wrote a song.
Trump cared of his sleeve. The champagne flows, the wine glass flows, the shipyard gates will have to close. They said so because of me, and I carry him a can of tea. The reality, my can of tea. For keeping your wages soon before we join the union. Lura, 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 tell me something of the truth. You couldn't hear your tell it and do your bit with the union. The bosses, they were doing fine. They be when working down the mine. They have them on the assembly line of it with the union. Lura, 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 tell me something of the truth. There's a fella down the road that I avoided. He's one of them that got the unemployed. He says it's all because of me. He can't get a job because I've got three, three nights and a Sunday the whole time. Three nights and a Sunday the whole time. I work all day and I work all night. The hell we jack, I'm all right. Three nights and a Sunday in the whole time. Love went and introduced a new machine. Love get ten men, but they want said seventeen. The machine does the work for you see. I did the work of the other three. Three nights and a Sunday in the whole time. Three nights and a Sunday in the whole time. I'll work all day and I'll work all night The hell we'll jack, I'm all right Three nights and a Sunday the whole time The wife come to the work the other day She says, woman, well, another we and on the way I says, I ne wonder you can laugh I've no been him for a year and a half Three nights and a Sunday the whole time Three nights and a Sunday in the whole time. I'll work all day and I'll work all night. There we'll jack, I'm all right. Three nights and a Sunday in the whole time. And now I never must have a bone Friday night. It's there you will always find me gay and bright. 
the old Simi and the old bay horse Come a weekend with her there, of course Three nights and a Sunday the whole time Three nights and a Sunday the whole time I work all day, I work all night The hell will you jack, I'm all right Three nights and a Sunday the whole time Some will head for heaven when they die and find the tongue of pillow in the sky. I'll be going to the other place, an idle life I couldn't face. Three nights and a Sunday the whole time. Three nights and a Sunday the whole time. I work all day, I work all night. The hell will you jack? I'm all right. Three nights and a Sunday the whole time. up spoke a provost, Rob Stewart his name, between Council of Glasgow, I'll bring water to your home. There's been men of vision, have formed a commission, and the Public Health Act, we're going to obey. We'll get water for Loch Catherine, and filter at Mulgai, and pipe it to the poor folk, it's no able to pay. There was bitter opposition to his proposition, till Parliament passed it, and he won I remember one time STV phoned him up. This is a Matt, we're doing a, a program on Benny Lynch. Could you write us a song? So Matt says, no problem. About an hour and a half, two hours later, he was on the phone. You know, and he sang he used to have it if they wrote a new song, he'd sing it through the phone to you. <laughs> you know, that was it. You know, we did care about the string about you, that really about you the back and a lot. That was it. You know, and he sang the song over. I think it was the director of STV doing the Benny Lynch program and great, no problem. And they used that was it. Benny has been. It's, it's a brilliant song. You know, that's it. Just like that. Ah, from the heart of the Garden Road, don't drop any stone. Get that free one down. From then on, when they see the best and young. Apart from being talented and honest and stuff like that, he was a very honest person. He was very, very brave. I'll never forget 
we had been playing in Ayrshire. I was playing banjo for him, me and Tam Harvey. And we were coming up the steps of Buchanan Street Station in the morning. We had got the train from Ayrshire. And then we were coming up the, the subway stairs at Buchanan Street to go for a pint, actually. And we're going up, there's a very steep station coming up. And there was Rangers supporters going down the right-hand side, if I remember, and Celtic supporters. They were all going to Copeland Road, Rangers and Celtic playing at Ibrox. So, and we were going up the middle, and we were all hairy people. And they were giving us a bad time. <laughs> all these Celtic and Rangers, they were apart from growling at one another. We got to, the, Matt said, I'm going to talk to the, I said, Matt, don't, don't, don't say a thing. We were at the top of the stairs, and they're all pouring for these animals. And he said, I'm going back. And I thought, oh my God. And he went back to the top of the stairs, and he looked down, and he went, hey! And all these <laughs> scarves and faces turned around. He says, you're nothing but a bunch of dirty orange finions. And these guys, <laughs> it was this confused look. <laughs> By this time, I was at Renfrew Street. My legs were just a blur. The guitar and banjo abandoned, running for my life. He was a brave person. Matt's superb children's songs are certainly the part of his work that enjoy the widest performance and recognition. And one of his happiest jobs was as a warden of an adventure playground in the Gorbals. There he learned all over again the joy in sounds and playing with words and incongruities, like the USA and Russia thinking their differences to search for a lost yo-yo. A decent wee man as a rule It's pleasing to tell That he rang on his bell And he asked every wain in the school Can't you find a ready yo yo Ready yo yo Ready yo yo Can't you find a ready yo yo We'll be our friends The wains left the pencils And papers and stencils To knock on the door Shadowy of all the figures in Matt's pageant was the one he married. Big smasher, said John Dorans to me. A fine big animal, said I. <laughs> Having taken in the pictures of a tall, slim, well-proportioned lovely with thick, rich, flaxen blonde hair cut short 
a sweet Alice Faye type face, and although just 18 years old, she had a ladylike and sedate bearing. It was the first time I'd seen Jeanette, and I little dreamt that in a few months' time, she and I would be preparing our own little single end in the little dovehill of the Gallagher. She was, some had said, Jeanette Gallagher. Jean Gallagher, I am very fond of her. In my arms I love to hold her. I'm thankful today for the very special way Nature did decide to mould her. With a fond embrace, a kiss upon her face, a gentle arm upon her shoulder, I sat her doon by the light o' the moon. Many were the lies I told her. When the sun lies doon to accommodate the moon, and the evening breeze blows kindly, when the black smoke comes feather in the red lums, it's the very way Jean you'll find me. We were married 26 years, so something must have kept us together all of that time, and I know that uh, if I hadn't seen him for a while, I was always delighted, always felt my, my life, I always felt a, a lift when I saw him again, and I, I liked seeing him. Because um, he was a great person, a great um, warm, um, humorous, funny person, great company most of the time, but other times a very moody and a very difficult man, a very difficult man to, to live with. Oh, with a fond embrace, a kiss upon her face, a gentle arm upon her shoulder. I sat her doom by the light of the moon. Many were the lies I told her. But with wives and single ends come wains, and the job of getting them to sleep, no lullaby was ever more effective than this one.
helped the singing one Saturday evening was my friend Hamish Imler, a genial, bright-eyed and heavily built man, and Peter Ross, a young law office worker. They sang the Kerry recruits in a haunting manner, which lingered, <laughs> which lingered even after the company had moved on to we're going to roll the union on. With a drink in me, I murmured something about none of them being in a union. And within a few minutes, Hamish was roused from his normal joviality to a fiery rage in which he was threatening to carry me outside the pub and do all sorts of things to my schnozzle. <laughs> and I suddenly sobered to the fact that this man was no flab, but a physical powerhouse. He could have massacred me with a couple of punches. I was pleased when he was asked by one of the staff to leave the premises. And I took over the leading of the singing from that moment, which is about half past eight. At ten past ten, I was being emptied from the pub with the rest of the spillage. <laughs> Hamish came rushing at me from the other side of the street, where he'd been waiting all this time for me to have a discussion. <laughs> Fortunately for me, there were enough there to separate us. And when 40 of them had gotten round Hamish, <laughs> the other one took me by the elbow and guided me towards my bus. At home in Fernhill, I said, to hell when I'm in the but I decided to do a real job in the Te Elwe and wrote a song of which the chorus should be sung sweetly and with feeling. I have heard men complain Oh, the job that they're doing While they're hawking the coal Or they're digging the drain But whatever they are there is an in a can compare with a man and man stone shovel and manure of manure. golden and brown it was put there of course be a big Clydesdale horse and they called it manure manure human beings under the influence of liquor has been a source of comedy since the beginning of literature. Matt, however, could also take a serious look at the dangers offered by troubled waters. I've been sailing through troubled waters that knew no come The winds were wailing O'er those waters And my sorrows knew no harm Troubled waters Troubled water 
victories of my mind. But in those waters, troubled waters, no solace could I find. Troubled waters, troubled waters, troubled waters in my soul. Storm clouds gather all those waters. I was wander o'er those waters, no love had I, troubled one. Anything matters in Scotland, it seems to me, is its popular culture. This has been the culture of Scotland. Consequently, we had to have not only people like Jeannie Robertson, who are carrying forward the great ballad tradition, the way you have it in Ireland too, but also people that were going to re-enliven the tradition. That means new songwriters. And that means people whose ears were attuned to the tradition, but could contribute something more to it. And Matt, in that sense, was superb. Musicologists would say he had no musical talent. He had masses of musical talent, but from some other direction. And it wasn't plagiarism. It was just use of what's around you. And I think it's a writer's duty. But he was brilliant in that sense. I think some of his songs have touched touches of genius. And some of his songs are rubbish. Well, Matt was an amazing phenomenon, wasn't he? He's the sort of phenomenon that every country should get once in a while, and Scotland luckily got it. Triumphantly got it with Matt McGinn. Nothing can obliterate that. All the same, one has to remember that this amazing bloke was a very, very complex and in some ways rather difficult bloke himself. Underlying his talents, and he had transcendent talents, there was a deep fund of melancholy in Matt, I felt. After all, a person who is so alive to the needs of humanity as Matt was, and he'd been inside uh, the working class movement trying to fight, as Gramsci would put it, for the betterment of men, of as many men as possible. Anyone who throws himself into this struggle knows that it won't end with his own death, but it's still going to go on. He's the sort of person who naturally will have a lot of Calvaries in his own life. Deep in my heart and deep in my mind, deep in the depths of my ego, deep in my breast lies a treasure chest, a world that only I can know. You can criticize me, Try to analyze me, put me in your little pigeon hole, but I'll still hold the key to the place where I am free, a place that only I control. Deep in my heart and deep in my mind. Deep in the depths of my ego, deep in my breast, lies a treasure chest, a world that only I can know. I can love you dearly, I can love you true, I can love you long and love you Deep 
Greed could seduce members of his class to ignore the struggle, but he believed that in spite of them, there would come a May Day to end all May Days. television and I met a guy who said there was a folk song club in Clyde Bank in a pub and I went and Matt McGinn was the, I think Josh McRae was the first guest and I couldn't believe how good it was and I went back the following week and they said Matt McGinn I said I hope he's a, I thought he'd be a cowboy like Josh you know American and all that and this man is a wee man is how you is all you can describe him as just a wee Glasgow man and he didn't have a beard then he was a kind of shriveled looking guy a lot older looking than his actual age came on and I have never ever known anything so funny I, I remember the moment so terribly well of being of being almost ill laughing just I, I was laughed out I couldn't laugh anymore at this extraordinary and then this incredible pathos coming deep and meaningful songs 
And it, I, I remember being really profoundly moved. I don't know whether you've noticed it when you've been making this program, but when I write an article or about him or when I mention the name Martin again, people smile. It's a natural action, a reflexive action to smile when you hear the words Martin again. And I think that's a great thing, and it's a pretty good way to be remembered. I've never, I never ever had to meet anybody like Matt. And maybe that's, you, you ask a question about 26 years, maybe that was, was part of it. That I never thought I would ever meet anybody uh, like this man, and I never have. I never did, and I never have. Yeah, I quite like. The songs performed tonight are but a small fraction of Matt's enormous output. But we hope we've given some idea of the range and depth of his work. And now, one subject they sang off, which covers all mankind. The cat has a lovely fur jacket. The cow has a leather jerkin. The sheep has a thick woolly jumper. But we have got nothing but skin. Skin. Skin, 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 Matt again had phoned up, uh, phoned me up at the office and made it clear that he was wanting to get back on the road again as a performer. And with a photographer, I went down to his flat to see him. And uh, he was living in a, a basement, or a ground floor of a basement flat in uh, Grey Street, just overlooking uh, Kelvin Grove Park. And uh, it was obvious that he was living in distress circumstances. Uh, it's a very bare house, just a room, hardly anything in it, and Matt didn't look well. You could tell he'd been having a rough time, but uh, he spoke uh, about his life, uh, where it had gone wrong. I think he had a lot of fair-weather friends, you know, that uh, had been all around him when he was a success. But when things 